Hello, this is Program Pride. My name is Todd James. Thanks so much for listening, and I hope you're having a great June Pride Month. Uh, we have a wonderful show today. We have a travel segment on places to go in Alberta with you and your friends. Uh, but up first, we have a relationship panel that was in the studio. And following that, Suzanne Jacket uh, interviewed Calgary lawyer Sam Sabri. So let's go to that relationship panel right now. And joining us today uh, for a panel discussion is Lance Lorette. Lance has the uh, uh, privilege of being the first Canadian to hold the uh, title of International Daddy Bear. He's also Mr. Edmonton Bear and the second runner-up for Mr. BC Leather. As well, uh, Michael Lobolis, a community activist from Central Alberta, and Carolyn Anderson, who is the president of the Gay and Lesbian Community Service Association of Calgary and a private therapist in Calgary. Welcome to Program Pride. Thank you. Um, within the, the lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgendered community, uh, our definitions of relationships are perhaps just as broad as the diversity of our community. And I was wondering if we could start today with uh, just a little bit about our own thoughts on relationships. Um, first to you, Lance. Well, I, I think relationships are forever. For me, forever is a different period of time depending on, on how the balance goes in the, between the two people. But uh, love is, is the biggest part of my relationship and I've just ended a relationship not too long ago and I'm just grateful that I'm able to speak um, freely about those kinds of things now without any inhibitions because I know that I have the ability to love and that I'm still a good person whether a relationship has ended and it could happen again at any time to find someone new. So I, I think there's, um, I really believe in relationships whether they're gay, straight or whatever and um, I, I think they're all positive. That's, that's interesting that you say um, relationships are forever but your definition of forever is very different. And that's what I'm dealing with right now is what is forever in a relationship. Um, I've been in a, I just got out of a five-year relationship that I had thought would last forever, and it didn't. And so the discussion now is do relationships, or should we be seeking out relationships, long-term relationships in a serial manner and have numerous throughout our lives rather than going for the heterosexual norm of until death do us part. And that's what I'm grappling with right now in my life, is should I be happy that I had a five-year relationship and now move on, or should I mourn the fact that I had a relationship end? Yeah, I think that's interesting, too. That's something I've been thinking about a lot over the last few years as well. I think that um, because we don't have a lot of models in the gay and lesbian community about what are relationships, that we can kind of play with what that looks like. And I think that we get caught into exactly what you're talking about, that it should be forever, and if it's not, then we failed somehow. Mm -hmm. There's something wrong with us, or we put less value on relationships. And maybe what it means is we have to change our expectation about relationships. Maybe it's really about um, being in a relationship with somebody as long as it's really healthy for both of you. And when we get to a place where um, either we've grown apart or we're not growing anymore, um, to feel like we have to be committed to staying to something that's unhealthy for either one of us may not be the healthiest thing. Mm -hmm. um, and then we get into that whole thing about how, how long do you stay to try and work something out or when is it okay to leave and to not be seen as um, not being able to make a commitment. I don't think it's about that. Mm -hmm. Well, a lot of times in, in the straight world, you see the opposites that attract, and sometimes you don't notice equal relationships, one side being more docile, one being more aggressive. Mm -hmm. In same-sex relationships, I often find that the pull is equal on either side, and that's why your comment, till death do us part, the good side of relationships really are the forever part, but when the death starts to set in, that's when you, mm -hmm. you go looking. Yeah. Right. So maybe death doesn't mean what it used to mean. It doesn't mean we have to be buried in order to get out of the relationship. Mm -hmm. So coming back to your point a little bit, because there aren't a lot of models out there, um, do you think as, as queer people we still define uh, the relationship on heterosexual terms or heterosexual norms? 
I think we try not to, but I think that we can't help it. When we've been raised with that as the only reflection of what's okay in a relationship, it's hard to move away from that. I think that we're seeing more and more people creating different lifestyles where um, we had talked a little bit earlier about uh, people being together, uh, a lesbian couple being together and living in the same household as a gay male couple and choosing to raise children together. Those seem to be new styles of families that we're creating, new styles of relationships. Um, we see people not necessarily making a commitment, some people opting to do a traditional making a commitment. I think what we look at now is what does that commitment mean? Are we redefining that a little bit? Uh, but I think it's really hard. It's, on one hand, it's really good that we don't have role models because we don't have to feel stuck in that. But on the other hand, we get stuck into the only thing that we know. And mm -hmm. so we're trying to sort of find our way. I almost see it that there's almost a conservative trend in the gay community that we're trying to get legitimized relationships by going after legalized unions or same-sex benefits and that type of thing, which I agree with to a certain degree. But um, I also see it as a, a hindrance to our development as a community going after a marriage ceremony mm -hmm. because we're just mirroring what is in the uh, straight community, which isn't necessarily working that well, although they will try to tell us that it is. Right. And we just can't seem to convince them that it's not working that well in the straight community. And why are we trying to emulate that? Well, I'm, I'm one step past the getting a marriage. I'm a divorced father with two teenage children. So having had a couple of live-in relationships, depending on the ages of my children, how much parenting time was required, it changed the, the balance between having a spouse. And sometimes that tended to make for a very short relationship on my part, or sometimes it could last two years. But um, for some gay and lesbian uh, people, it's difficult coming into that ready-made family. But I was very much a family man. I was just now a gay family man, not mm -hmm. a straight man. Yeah, I think that there's just an ongoing struggle and some, I think you're right, some people are trying to get into a place where they do emulate a straight relationship and, and we're seeing children being introduced into relationships and things and it, there's been sort of a connotation almost that to be an adult and to choose not to have children, to be in a relationship is so sort of somehow selfish and I liked what you had been talking about in terms of feeling like there's a time as an adult that you get to celebrate who you are and to just play and to to have a life and to make uh, each one of those things be an equally good choice none of them are better than the other there's not a goal that you have to attain and once you're there and you're in a relationship and you've got the two kids and you've got a car and the white picket fence and things like that you've achieved something but that we can keep that really open to be anything that we want it to be I'm wondering if we can uh, f come back a little bit to as gay lesbian bisexual transgendered people um, so often we are defined as sexual beings in the act of of our sexuality and I'm wondering how how you all feel that focuses into the whole relationship dilemma or, or power structure well um, for myself I'm I'm a bear bears are usually associated with being larger bearded furry men and some people have the connotation that it's just simply a sex club well that's not true it's very much a social organization it's a very large structure. There are bear clubs in Canada as well as the U.S. and Europe. And, um, and I think the, the amount of time that we travel to the cities to support the other clubs, we take the spirit mm -hmm. with us, but not the sexuality so much. It's very empowering to be at a convention with 1,400 bears, your peers as such. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, no, I think that another connotation is lesbians that um, once you get into a relationship that's it the sexual relationship is over <laughs> um, and I don't think that that's true I think that we focus so much on um, sexuality when you hear the term homosexual that people mm -hmm. forget that there are other broader aspects to who we are and in any healthy relationship I think that that means balance there's a balance in your sexuality and what you do independently in a relationship what you do together as a couple mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I come from a very conservative viewpoint when it comes to sexuality. I personally feel there is too much sexuality in the gay community, not necessarily the lesbian community, I'm not that familiar with them, but with the gay community, I feel that they don't value sexuality as much as mm. perhaps some heterosexuals do. Mm. 
And then again, here I am trying to emulate the heterosexuals again. And so it's a real balancing act as to um, at what point do you have sex with a person in a relationship? And I find that it's very quick in the gay community mm -hmm. as opposed to the straight community. But then again, perhaps I'm not that informed on the gay or the straight community myself. Maybe they're hopping into bed quite as, just as fast <laughs> as, as we right. seem to be doing. Okay. I, I think maybe some of, some of the things that I've heard from, from all of you today is, is, is there are certain things that perhaps make a relationship successful. Uh, and I guess we can use that term however we want. One of them is respecting each other, like respect of yourself and respect of your partner or partners. Uh, also a fair bit of open communication and honesty. Um, and, and then love. I guess too, mm -hmm. and maybe that comes back to respect. Um, we're we're quickly running out of time. I was wondering if um, if I could go to each of you for just uh, a brief comment, a thirty second comment on uh, any words of wisdom or encouragement for for our viewers out there. Uh, let's start with Lance. Well, I would say love love first, and get to know your partner or partners. As Michael is saying, you know, you don't want to jump into bed too quickly, but on the other hand, you meet special people all the time, and it's not wrong to acknowledge that. That's part of us. And uh, I don't think we need to worry too much about all the boundaries. There are other people that impose them on us. We need to be honest with ourselves to make our communities grow, and we can form very loving and strong relationships in doing so. Excellent. Uh, Michael? I think one of the most important things in a relationship is trust. and. I would like to see more people within the community um, attempt to work out their problems. I find that too often we just run. We run into a problem and we run. It's, it's so easy now, I guess it's back to the marriage situation. We don't have to go through the divorce proceedings and the splitting up of the property, so it's very easy for us to split. But if, it, if you've spent much time in the relationship, I'd like people to try and stay in it if it's healthy. Mm -hmm. And that's a very important thing we have to consider is the health of the relationship. And Carolyn. Yeah. Uh, I agree with things that both of you have said. I think uh, the other thing is that we can just celebrate being in whatever form of relationship we want to be. If we can take care of ourselves and respect ourselves and then make good choices for what we want our relationships to look like, we don't have to fit anybody's mold. Mm -hmm. It can be whatever is creative and healthy for us and whoever we choose to be in relationships with. Excellent. Well, I'd like to thank all three of you for joining us today to talk briefly about relationships. And uh, certainly one of the things that I, I've discovered today is that uh, building on those key components, and it doesn't really matter what your relationship is, as long as you know there's trust, there's respect, there's love, there's communication, and honesty. Five simple things <laughs> to make a relationship <laughs> successful. Um, thank you all very much for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you. Sam. Good morning, Suzanne. Thanks for spending some time with us today to talk about the legal issues around relationships. And let's start with commitment ceremonies. They seem to be the thing to do. Yes, they certainly are the thing to do. Um, I've been to several lately, and I'm sure we all have. Um, they're very good things, but if you're talking about law, they hold no water whatsoever. They are not recognized in Canadian law in any way, shape, or form. Okay. So there are some things happening in the States and in other countries. Um, does that give us any hope that there will be recognition in Canada? I think somewhere down the line uh, they will. I mean, we're eventually going to have marriage recognized between same-sex spouses, and I believe it's going to be in our lifetime, um, probably within the next decade. Mm -hmm. and they will, I'm sure, take the form of commitment ceremonies. They will just evolve into something that is recognized. There may be a step in between whereby some municipalities will recognize, or recognize domestic partnership in term, and, and evidence of a domestic partnership would be a commitment ceremony. And where would that be useful for us right now? Um, if you were able to prove something. In today's day and age, I would think, again, although it's not legally recognized, it would be some evidence of being in a relationship if you were, to, for example, to try to adopt, whether or not you could actually adopt being another issue. 
but assuming you were able to, this would be some evidence that the couple was in a committed conjugal relationship, which would be a part of being a parent and a spouse. Exactly. So leading right into adoption, we're not legally able to adopt, whether we've been together for you know, 20 years or however, however long, right? On paper, you could adopt in Alberta, but in reality, you cannot. I think we all remember the quotes regarding the foster mother from Edmonton who was given, uh, given a directive, or actually social services was given a directive from the minister that they were not to pass such applications. In terms of actual adoption, in Alberta, you could adopt as a single parent if you were not revealing your sexual orientation. You cannot adopt your spouse's children. If, for example, you decided to have a child by alternative insemination, for instance, the non-biological parent cannot adopt the other one's child. That has nothing to do with sexuality per se. What it has to do with is the fact that the Act talks about spouses, and right now, spouse in Alberta is only same, or pardon me, opposite sex couples. And you said in Alberta, is it different in other provinces? It is different in Ontario and in um, British Columbia. So the, the non-biological parent is able to adopt in those provinces? That's right. The legislation has been changed in, in Ontario because of court application made by three lesbian couples in 1995 and in British Columbia because they changed their Adoption Act sometime last year to include same-sex couples. So in the same vein that there's hope for commitment ceremonies, does the adoption issue, is it tied to that whole issue of spouse and, and marriage and legal representation, or, or is there a hope separate from the commitment ceremony? Do you know what I mean? For, for adoption, for us being able to adopt each other's children. It, it, it is certainly not dependent upon a commitment ceremony whatsoever. It, it is just a little bit more evidence, again, of being a couple, but as with most issues, they're separate but intertwined. It's really hard to just to pull them separate. apart and say this is one and this is the other. Yeah. It must, if there has been a, a, a split uh, a split up and there are children involved, it must, it must be just devastating for the people involved. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure it's just horrific. Um, I've had several files in here whereby people who had had children together or somebody had come into the relationship with a child um, then ended up splitting the sheets and uh, the non-biological parent was not allowed any access to the children. Mm. And there's really not much they can do right. about it. Right. Okay. Now just quickly, we have to wrap up in a, in a couple of uh, seconds here, but what, what can we do to protect ourselves? There's, there's uh, enduring power of attorney, there's wills. What should we be doing? Those are exactly the things that you should be doing, Suzanne. Our relationships are the same as everybody else's, but they're not recognized in law to protect yourselves in good times, but particularly bad. You do what we call papering the file. You enter agreements. You have an agreement called a will you, as to how you leave all your belongings. You have an agreement called an enduring power of attorney that lets you handle the other's property and uh, personal issues if they're hospitalized, for instance. Let you be the one at the deathbed. You have a cohabitation agreement that sets out how you're going to manage your affairs in good times, but unfortunately in bad times as well. Who gets the house? Who gets the cat? Exactly. Well, Sam, we very much appreciate your uh, time today, and I think you've spread light on uh, the situation for a lot of us. Thank you very much. Thank you for the opportunity, Suzanne. relationships. What makes some succeed and others fail? Well, I'm no expert, believe me. All I know is what I know. I'm 42 years old and I've had three serious relationships, including my current relationship of 11 years, which we both consider to be a marriage. Are we a match made in heaven? Well, Suzanne's a sports fanatic, and except for golf, I could take it or leave it. I'm a neat freak. Everything has to have its place. Suzanne, on the other hand, uses the pile system. 
piles of clothes, piles of papers. When I trim the hedge, it's done in 45 minutes, including cleanup. When Suzanne trims the hedge, it's a work of art that takes three days planning, two days to execute, and somehow involves me. To rent a movie we both enjoy is almost impossible. I like obscure artsy films. Suzanne falls down in hysterics over anything slapstick. Do opposites attract? Initially, yes. Over the long haul? Well, let's just say learning to live with each other's differences makes life interesting. We do have one thing in common, though. We absolutely love each other. We both volunteer on the phones at the Gay and Lesbian Community Services Association. And we both have had calls from people just coming out who say they don't know what to expect from a gay or lesbian relationship. They wonder if it's different than other relationships. And my simple answer to that is that although being in a gay or lesbian relationship offers some unique challenges, it's no different than any two people learning to live, love, and discover one another. It's been my experience that good relationships are honest and kind, they comfort and encourage, and they have the ability to change and grow with the demands of each new day. That's just my opinion. I'd love to hear how you feel. You can contact me here at Program Pride. I'm Sue Thomas, and if you'll excuse me, it is my turn to trim the hedge. And I'm Suzanne, just mentioned in the commentary, here with my piles of paper. And in them, I have some information on travel that I'd like to share with you. In June, we have Pride Week in Toronto, June 23rd to 29th. Thousands, hundreds of thousands of people attend this. And as a matter of fact, I was there a couple of years ago, and it's phenomenal. If you get a chance, try to go. Airfare starts at $440. Great opportunity. In LA and San Francisco, their gay pride parades are June 20th to 27th. And back locally, we have Calgary, June 21st, Winnipeg, June 22nd, Edmonton, June 28th, Kelowna, June 28th, and also on June 28th, we have the Lethbridge Barbecue in Pride, and I blew it. Um, rounding out the month, we have the Canadian Rockies International Rodeo in Calgary at the Simons Valley Ranch. Thousands of people attend, and this is also during the World Police and Fire Games. Moving into July, we have River Rafting for Women in Oregon, July 19th to 22nd. Sounds like a great time if you can take it in. An eight-day cruise, gay and lesbian cruise to Alaska, starting on July 23rd. And a day hike fundraiser, Ghost Rider Mountain, which is near Fernie. And this is a benefit for Cranbrook AIDS Society. In Calgary, we have the Folk Festival, uh, 24th to the 27th. Um, Victoria Pride Week, July 1st to 6th. London, Ontario Pride Week, July 6th to 13th. And this is really difficult to say. Ottawa Hull Pride Days, July 12th to 13th. And the greatest month, August. Hopefully it'll be really warm for the Nelson Fruit Float, which is on the August long weekend. The Vancouver Pride Weekend is August 2nd to 4th, and with airfares being so cheap, it's only 150 bucks to go to uh, Vancouver, so try and give that a shot this summer. Locally, we have right here near Red Deer, the Great Alberta Campout, August 29th to September 1st. Over 200 people attend this. It should be a great time. Um, Folk Festival in Edmonton, August 7th to 10th, and the Fringe Festival in Edmonton, August 15th to 24th. Now, I've gone through that quite quickly, um, but for more information, you can, oops, my papers. You can call Vince at 341-4184, and he's provided us with this information, and we're really glad that he did. We thank him very much. Um, one organization that we want to tell you about particularly is Out and Out. They have a $5 membership fee. They're located in Edmonton, and they do a lot of outdoor activities. Um, they have a canoe trip in July and August, and fifth annual camping and hiking trip to Jasper, July 3rd to July 5th, and they do mountain biking, rollerblading, uh, motorcycle touring, 4 by 4 beach volleyball, and they also have movie nights. So a great social activity uh, group to get involved with. Once again, their membership fee is $5. 
So once again, just so you don't forget, Vince, 3414184. Oh, Zen, Linda. That was absolutely amazing. Yeah, Those piles best. work really well for you. They do. They do. And I can find everything. That was incredible. And you didn't blow it up. That was fine. It was perfect. Michael, you must come join us. Michael being our producer and creator, I guess you could say. Yep. Two Here years ago, two and a half years ago, this three came years around. Ago. Three years ago. Three years ago, I started this endeavor. And it's coming to a, the second year is coming to a close. And I am leaving Program Pride. I'm going to pass the reins on to somebody else. But I'm only going to pass on the reins to somebody else if we can get continued on Shaw Cable Edmonton and Calgary and Red Deer. There's a lot of changes happening in Shaw that they're not quite sure what's going on with all of their programming. So we need to know if you're out there. So we need you to make some phone calls so that we know whether this show is even needed. So Bob, in the control room, if you can get these phone numbers ready, we can uh, read these phone numbers off for you. If you're living in Red Deer and watching this show, now we're begging you to phone in and say we're watching this show. Please keep it on for next year. Phone Shaw Red Deer at 346-5717. It's 3465717. Must be here somewhere. <laughs> now, we'd also like you to make another phone call while you're in Red Deer, and that's to the, each of the representatives of our crew. Um, we started out this program, um, we didn't know what we were doing. Only one person that had experience on TV. The rest of us didn't know. And it sort of showed during our first few programs. But we have really <laughs> improved. And I'd like to thank all the crew for all the work they've done. But you don't have to know anything to join the crew of this show. So I'd like you to phone us as well and say, great job, or give us some feedback. So in Red Deer, phone 347-2174. <laughs> you got that up, Bob? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, All right. Shaw Calgary, if you're in Calgary, please phone them at 250-2885 and also phone Program Pride at 247-4448. Okay, are we done with numbers yet? No, Shaw yeah. Edmonton, 468-7115, <laughs> extension 100, and Pro Program Pride Edmonton, 482-7584. Are we done now? Is that so that's it, all the numbers. Okay, well anyway, Thanks. why don't we just introduce ourselves real quick. I'm Linda, the director. I'm Leanne. And you did audio. Audio. I'm Carolyn. She's jack of all trades. <laughs> yes, I did whatever was Jane. Jane, <laughs> Jane of all she, trades. She helps Linda. She's <laughs> <laughs> uh, floor director and camera. Oh, Suzanne, camera. And host. Host. And travel viewers thing. Yeah. And I'm yeah. Michael, producer and jack of all trades. And I'm Todd, and it's been so much fun to be with you all. And hopefully we'll be back next year with yeah. a dynamic show. Please come get involved or get involved however you can in your community. Right. How are we doing, Lorenz? Roll credits. Roll, Roll credits. credits. Okay. Right. Thanks, Michael. Okay, wow. Good show, you guys. Yeah. Yeah. Way to go. Yeah. We did okay. And we're done. So what are we doing? <laughs> I don't know. I think we have to go get something. Yeah. Thank you, Michael. <laughs> Hug. Oh, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Hug. Good job, oh, Thank you. Thank you. Have we faded to black yet? Are still scrolling the paper? You're supposed to sweep the floor, yes. mop the floor. Help the scrolling happen. Help the scroll. Get your hands out of my face. <laughs> what do you need to do? Like, beauty dog. Like this. <laughs> Gathered up all my piles. There it is. Very good piles. Very good piles. Oh, the other way. Flip it. Yes. Oh. Point it at the camera. Okay, are we waving yet? Are we waving yet? Are we fading yet, Lorenz? Fading oh. the black. Everybody 